Hey guys, welcome to Raw Customs. I'm your host, Patrick Rapolo, and on this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to make the Mark III Iron Man helmet. So yes, I do have templates available, as well as a kit. You can find links to each of those in the description area below. For now, let's check out the kit real quick. So the kit comes with all your sections cut out and ready to glue together. All your detail lines are already marked and cut in, as well as some reference lines to help you put the helmet together. Now as far as the lenses guys, I'm leaving that up to you. Now I do recommend just buying a cheap pair of sunglasses, say from the dollar store, popping out the lenses and gluing them in. You can check out my earlier video where I made an Iron Man helmet where I did use lenses and LEDs to make the eyes light up. Now as far as the rest of the materials, if you're going with the templates, you're going to need three sheets of EVA foam, 5mm, 12 by 18 sheets is what I used on this one. Uh, as well as your pens, pencils, plastic dip, paint, all your normal stuff, and of course your glue. I recommend contact cement, but you could use hot glue uh, as well uh, if that's your, your medium of choice, which you like to use. Now, as far as difficulty, I would probably give this a four to a five, and that's because of the heat gun, which is a must on this build. You're going to need to be able to heat these uh, sections up and be able to form mold and bend these things now if you get it wrong the first time don't worry about it just reheat your part and uh re-bend it and the, the sections they need to be right before you glue the pieces together that way your helmet comes out just right and as far as the head size goes this is going to be right around 24 inches if you measure your head around around 24 inches is probably pretty close to the limit that this helmet's going to fit uh, my head's 22 and a quarter, and uh, I just had my son try it on, and his head is right at 23 and a quarter, and the helmet did fit him still loosely, so I'd say right around 24 is your limit. Well, all right, guys, that's enough talking about it. Here's how to do it. For this build, you're going to need three sheets of 5 millimeter foam, contact cement, Plasti Dip, spray paint, a heat gun, a rotary tool, razor knife, some sunglasses would help. The forehead section of your helmet. Pull the sides into the center section and hold the piece together until it cools. Then use a pencil to trace out the center tabs onto the back. Next apply contact cement to the edges as shown as well as the flaps and the marked area. I recommend using two coats of contact cement on all edges. Once the glue set up, press the sections together. The outside sections should slowly rise from front to back. Next apply glue to the outside surface area on each end and to the top edge of the side piece. Line your two sections up at the front edge and press the pieces together working your way to the back. Next, heat the face section up and bow it into a U shape. Now heat the pieces for the upper jaw. Use your fingers to slightly roll this piece across its length. Now apply glue to the surface area on the back side of your face piece and to the top edge of the jaw section. Press your two pieces together starting at the front edge and working your way to the back. Next, take the forehead and face section and line up the edges where they come together. Make a reference mark and apply glue to your edges. 
Once your glue set, press the two pieces together, working your way from the back edge to the front. Now press the center flap to the back side of the forehead. Make reference marks for glue as well as a center point to help you line the piece back up. Pull the flap back out and apply your glue. And once the glue is set up, you can press your pieces together. Use a rotary tool to clean up the seams in the jaw area where the pieces come together. Then round over the top edge. Clean the seam for the forehead section and round over the top edge as well. Now heat the section for the side of the helmet. Place it onto something round. You'll want to mold the back section but leave the front section straight. Next, heat the top section and mold it over something round. Focus on rounding the back section of this piece. Apply glue to the side edges of your top piece and to the top rounded edge of the side section. Press your pieces together starting at the back edge and working your way to the front. Next, grab the section for the lower jaw. Place the inside brace in place on the back side as shown. Then trace reference lines front and back. Now heat the jaw piece and use the straight edge to press divots into the foam to help make clean folds. Make an indention between the two corners on both sides and on the two corners at the front section. Apply glue to the surface area of the front section to the front edges of the side sections, to the bottom and front edge of the flap, and the surface area that was marked off on the back side. Apply glue to the inside edge on the brace and to the marked surface area. Now bend the flap in. Line up the edge with the brace and press the pieces together, but leave the leg loose at this point. Pull the brace into the main jaw, make sure to keep the flap lined up. Then press the leg down along the lower flap. Press the side of the jaw in till it's even with the edge of the front flap. Then press the pieces together, working away from the corner out. Now fold down the flap, line up the top edges, and work your way to the center. Glue in the square on the inside at the front of the jaw. Now's a good time to clean up your seams and round over your edges. Use a razor to cut a small section to complete your detail line. Now grab the top portion of the helmet. On the front section of the side, make a sharp bend from corner to corner. Apply glue to the bottom edge of the helmet and to the top edge of the jaw. Press the two pieces together starting at the back edge and working your way to the front. Apply glue to the edges of the side of the helmet as shown and to the corresponding edges of the face plate. Press the face plate to the helmet starting at the corner behind the eye. Work your way from the corner to the lower jaw. You can put a scrap piece of foam between joints that you're not ready to glue together yet. 
Once you get to the corner of the lower jaw, bend the side of the helmet to match the angle. Next, press your pieces together from the top corner to the top of the helmet, then join the top of the faceplate to the top of the helmet. There will be a small corner sticking out once the pieces are joined together. This will be cleaned up later. Next, press the center of the helmet onto the faceplate and make a reference line for the flap. Apply glue to the edges and the marked area as shown. Press your pieces together starting at the corner of the faceplate and then press your flap in place. Now take two of your rectangle pieces, place them on the inside of the helmet over the slots, and make a reference line. Apply glue to the inside of your helmet and to the rectangle. Press your rectangle in place, glue down the front edge on, and bow the rest of the piece back. Flip the helmet over and roll out the rectangle piece as you glue down your slot. This will help you to even the gap. Heat the short section for the back of the helmet. You want to roll this section across its width and bend it along its length. Take your time and work the piece from end to end. This will give you a piece that's curved and concaved. Place the piece inside the back of the helmet along the reference lines on the top. Then trace a reference line for glue on the inside of the helmet. Apply glue to the surface area that you marked on the inside of the helmet and to the top surface area of the back piece. Pull the ends of the back section in and hold them. Press the back section in place starting in the center. And one at a time, roll the ends out as you press your pieces together following your reference line. Heat the back bottom section of the helmet. Curve and concave the center section of this piece, but leave the circles on the ends flat. Place the back section in place on back of the helmet and make a center mark. Line your piece up and mark reference lines. Apply glue to the marked areas on the inside of the helmet. Then apply glue to the top section of the back piece. Pull the ends in and hold them. Press the back section in place, starting in the center. Roll the ends out one at a time as you press your pieces together, following the reference line. As you press your pieces together, stop at the top of the curve on the side of the helmet. Hold the remaining area back, and line up the bottom edge of the jaw with the reference line. Press the pieces together, working your way to the upper jaw. Then work your way from the center of the top down to the jaw area. This will give you a nice point for the upper jaw line. Next, line up the face plate with the lower jaw and make a center mark. Then press the face plate to the inside of the jaw. Apply glue to the top of your braces and to the corresponding sections inside the face plate. 
Line the face plate up with your jaw using your center mark and press your pieces together. Now take the jaw gap section. Place it on the inside of the helmet behind the jaw and mark a reference line under this section. Then apply glue to the inside of the helmet and to the marked area on your piece. Once your glue set, press the section in place. Now grab your remaining rectangle, place it in the gap on the back side of the helmet and make a reference line. Apply glue to your pieces and press the section in place. Next grab the solid circle and the circle with the slot and glue the surface areas together. Use a rotary tool to clean up your seam and bevel the top edge. Place the circle in place on the side of the helmet and trace a reference line. Apply your glue and press the section in place. However you want to clock this section is up to you. I lined up the top edge of the slot with the bottom edge of the helmet. You should have points sticking up at the top of the faceplate and the back of the jaw. Use a rotary tool to make these sections flush with the rest of the helmet. I recommend waiting 24 hours to allow the glue to cure. Then you can heat your helmet to relax the foam. This will also allow you to straighten up and form any sections that need it. To paint the helmet, you'll need to seal the foam. I recommend using Plasti Dip. Here I'm applying two light coats followed by two heavy coats. That was followed by two coats of red paint that was allowed to dry for 24 hours and the face plate taped off. And two coats of gold paint applied to the face plate. And then the paint job finished by painting the jaw gap section black. There it is guys, the Iron Man helmet all put together. You see the details, they really come out looking nice. The pieces fit together really well. Now I did put quite a bit of work into trying to get all the pieces sized right, the reference lines together, just so it'd come together as easy as I could possibly make it for you anyways, guys. And yes, I am planning on finishing out the Iron Man suit. This big guy right here, but be patient with me, it's going to take a little while because I've got other projects in front of it. Namely, right now what I'm working on is the Shore Trooper suit. I'm trying to rescale it a little bit and put uh, some more detail into it and get that ready to put out for you. I'm planning on having two sizes plus the templates for you guys. So be patient. That's what's uh, coming as quick as it can. Uh, I've already built one entire suit, so uh, I just want to make sure I have all the videos, all the pieces together, and ready to go for you, as well as a little proton grenade from Star Wars, a guy where it lights up, so I'm working on that little piece, and I'll be throwing that in uh, the mix somewhere pretty soon as well. well Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate uh, all the comments. I've been reading them. I'm sorry I can't get back to you. I am working 10 to 12 hours a day on my regular job that pays the bills and then trying to come and do this, uh, the videos for Raw Custom for you and as well as making kits and getting those out for you. So uh, keep the comments coming in. I'll try to get back to you uh, when I can. But thank you so much for all your views. God bless and I'll see you on the next build.